Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be part of this Lunch Ultrasound Symposium. I know it should be dessert time for you now, so we'll try to keep you awake. And so we are going to change the topic and speak about interventional radiology. And before we see the current and uh, future indication of ultrasound-guided biopsies and intervention, I would like to make some reminders and like in Back to the Future, go into the past through the years of interventional radiology where um, ultrasound began at the end of the 40s. And you can see here the first clinical picture of the liver. So it was basically pixel over pixel. And clearly, the images have improved over the years. If we focus on interventional radiology, at the beginning of the 70s, we have the first reports focusing on the use of ultrasound to guide percutaneous biopsies. And then at the beginning of the 90s, this is more fiction than true history, people wanted to push the boundaries of ultrasound guided intervention, and so they went to fusion imaging. But at that time, it was clearly mental fusion, and as you can see here, it was not really always effective. So things have evolved since that time. The image quality has improved, and we have now many new tools on our ultrasound machine that help us for a daily practice intervention. So we came at ECR 2015 to present for the first time the use of uh, needle tracking and fusion to guide uh, biopsies and interventions. And today we stay at ECR 2017. And the goal is to show you what we know already and also what can we do with the new tools which are available on the machine. So tools that you already know because it's already been presented. Basically, we have four important, uh, important things uh, for us for, to guide intervention. The microconvex probe, because you can imagine we can go through very tiny acoustic windows and have the same depth penetration than the standard abdominal probe. Contrast ultrasound, because it is helpful to see some lesion, also to target some viable part of the lesion, and also to assess ablation once you have treated the patient. Fusion imaging, a great tool to guide interventions because you can identify the target lesion much more confidently in many situations. And finally, needle tracking. You know that there are many situations where you really wonder where the needle tip is, and clearly needle tracking will overcome uh, this problem by showing you exactly the pathway and the tip uh, needle position. Now, what about the latest innovations? Things that have come on the latest machines uh, last year. I would like to go into more details. First of all, 3D acquisition. That was my feeling about 3D acquisition. It's for people who want to see the child before it's going out of the uh, mother abdomen. But clearly, it can be helpful for other things. Look at this. This is a cryoablation of a superficial lymph nodes. And you can easily perform a 3D acquisition. You will see I just displacing the probe over the skin of the patient. And you have a 3D volume ultrasound data set. And from now on, you can go that on the screen and work like you are on the workstation. Do reconstruction. You have two kinds of reconstruction which are presented here. You can go into the volume and go onto the axial, coronal, and sagittal pictures and check that you are perfectly located in the center of the tumor, as shown on this case. This is the coronal view. This is the axial view. You see that the needle location is perfectly in the center of the tumor. You can also do city-like reconstructions. You can check and select the thickness of the reconstruction, but also the intervals, and have like CT pictures of your uh, lymph node with the needle inside the tumor. You can do the same thing using contrast. So you can inject contrast and then acquire volume. You have an example here. So this is the volume ultrasound data set. And from that data set, you can reconstruct multiplanar things, and in that case, we did two ablation, as you can see here, and you can measure the size of ablation on three dimension, which is much more precise than evaluating this just on a two dimension. A word about fusion, we talked already about that. Before um, the new system, we had to do the fusion based on anatomical landmarks. So for example, vessels or bone landmarks. Now you can do auto-registration. So basically, you're just putting a small sensor on the skin of the patient. You have to put the sensor in the volume scan of the CT or MR acquisition. And then, with just one click, you click auto-registration, and you will have a correlation between the live ultrasound and the CT or MR uh, DICOM images. Of course, you can adjust it using one or two more uh, anatomical landmarks, but basically, it goes faster, and it's much more precise. Another uh, very important thing with uh, auto-registration is if the patient moves or the electromagnetic sensor moves, 
you can go back to the Fusion using auto-registration. So this is really helpful in uh, daily practice. You can also combine 3D and Fusion uh, with the so-called ultrasound, ultrasound fusion acquisition. This is an example here. So what you are doing, you are acquiring a 3D ultrasound acquisition. So I showed you it takes a few seconds. And then you register it to the live ultrasound images. As shown here, this is the live ultrasound. And this is the ultrasound from the 3D uh, acquisition which has been done uh, previously. So it doesn't look that interesting in that case. But if you combine it, for example, with contrast, this makes sense. Look at here, you have an HTC, so we position the microwave probe within the HTC, doing a 3D acquisition, register it to the live ultrasound with fusion, uh, with ultrasound, ultrasound fusion, and this is after treatment. So this was the tumor before, this is the tumor after ablation, you can see the bubble of gas. It seems that we are covering the tumor, but what you see, the gas, is not always what you get. So we need to inject the contrast to see the ablation zone, and this is what we are doing here, ultrasound, ultrasound fusion plus contrast. This is the tumor before, and you can see the ablation zone there. We are covering the tumor with safety margins, so we are quite happy with our treatment. And finally, needle tracking, also some new innovations. Till now, we could only track one probe at a time, but right now we can go up to three probes. And this is very important because with the improvement of interventional radiology, we are using more and more multi-probe ablation. Could be um, radio, uh, radio frequency ablation with a cluster of two or three probes, but also cryo ablation. And look at, in that case, we had three tracking devices. And when you puncture, you can track probe one, probe two, and then probe three, and know exactly where you stand. So these are all the tools we have. Now we can see what we can do with that. So coming back to the stack, you remember, you can image it uh, with ultrasound, but the stack may have a problem. It's got a tumor. So now we have probably to see exactly what's going on inside and do a biopsy. So what you know about biopsies is that the majority of biopsies are performed with the percutaneous approach nowadays. And the number of biopsies will increase in the next future because we have to do the first diagnostic, but also to reevaluate the tumor on the treatment, and this is more and more performed. Of course, ultrasound is easily accessible and should be the first uh, modality to be used in that case. The basic principle of a biopsy is easy. You see the tumor and you target it with your needle. So in many situations, you don't need fusion, you don't need needle tracking, you don't need contrast, such as most of the liver biopsies or uh, biopsies of a superficial lymph nodes, it's easily uh, performed and fast, quickly performed on their ultrasound. However, there are many tricky situations. Look at this, this is a large tumor, should be a liposarcoma. So probably you would go for CT guidance in that uh, indication. Why is that? Because if you look here with ultrasound, this is what you see almost nothing. Lesion is poorly visible, and the needle will be hardly visible too because it's already hyperechoic. But if you use fusion and needle tracking, look at this, it looks like CT. You can target easily the lesion which is here, and you know that from the fusion, you will be in the correct location. You can see exactly where the tip of your needle is, and even if it's hyperechoic, you know where you are. And finally, you are sure in that case that you stay retroperitoneal, which should be, of course, uh, the, the case in that, uh, in that biopsy case. So basically, you do something on the ultrasound very precisely, and you are not going to CT. And there are potentially many indications for uh, such combination for biopsies. This is an example from uh, our center, lung biopsies. You know that subplural lung bi um, lesions can be accessible to uh, ultrasound guidance. And here again, fusion imaging may help you to target the lesion. Look at that case. You are able to identify the tumor, which was not visible on, uh, or barely not visible using standard ultrasound. And then if you can see it, you can target it, of course. And using needle tracking, you can see exactly where your needle is. And that was not easy uh, in that uh, case. So clearly, you can perform more and more procedures uh, using these tools. So biopsy is interesting, but all the latest innovations, I think, are clearly interesting for ablation. Coming back to the stake, he has a tumor, so it's desperate, but maybe interventional radiology can fix the problem and make the tumor disappear using ablation. So again, ablation, more and more evidences in the literature. If you go to liver, kidney, lung publications, we have more and more papers with large number of patients. So the number of ablation will increase too because there are more and more indications and we are now including into in the ESMO guidelines, so the Society of Medical Oncology, the ESMO guidelines for primary and secondary liver cancer, so the number of patients 
requiring inhalation will increase. If we do that, we have to be as good as surgeon, as good as radiotherapy, so aiming at A0 ablation, ablation with safety margins like shown in that case, you have a small tumor, you clearly need to do a large ablation to be sure you have covered everything. The four very important steps when you are doing um, percutaneous ablation should be the choice of an optimal approach, being able to see the tumor with that optimal approach, inserting the probe exactly as you planned and be sure that they are correctly located, and finally, assessing complete ablation at the end of your treatment. So I can tell you, if you have a patient coming for an ablation and if you give him this kind of ultrasound machine, this will be his reaction. He's happy, but only inside. Now, if you bring him a better machine, you will start seeing him reacting. He opened the mouth, he starts to be happy. Now, bring him the Aplio 500 with contrast fusion needle tracking, and then he will go crazy. And finally, if you go with the Aplio I, that will become incredible. And I can tell you there was no naked technicians behind the ultrasound machine. It's just because of the Aplio I. So why is that? I want to illustrate this with three cases, three short cases, patient with liver metastasis, and they are scheduled for treatment. You can see that we are um, providing different treatments, RFA with a cluster of three probes in patient one, microwave ablation with two applications in patient two, and microwave ablation with one application in patient three. Coming back to the four important steps of the procedures, choice, the, the choice of the optimal approach and visualization of the tumor. In patient one, we have to come in the great axis of the tumor, which is like that. So based on CT, the optimal approach is to go anterior. This is the safest, more direct, and best option to treat this patient. So again, using the microconvex probe and fusion imaging, we are able to image through a very tiny acoustic window able to identify the tumor, which, is, which was hard based on uh, ultrasound uh, alone, whereas on fusion you can really be sure that you are choosing the optimal intercostal space and you are targeting the correct lesion. Then inserting the probe, the goal when you are doing, uh, when you are ablating with a cluster of three is to have a triangle shape uh, positioning of the needle like that. So in that case, we went with the multi-tracking devices, so three probe, three tracking, we insert each probe separately, probe up, probe two, probe three, and you can see that it's quite hard to image there with ultrasound, so we use both fusion and ultrasound and needle tracking to position a needle. And finally, if you activate all needle tracking together, you can measure the distance in between each probe. It should be one, between 1.5 to 2 centimeter, and this is the case here. Going further, you can go and use the quad view mode, as shown before. You can see I'm scanning the patient, you can see the movement of the probe there, and what I'm looking like is exactly the distance in between the probe, starting again. When we come on the tumor there, oops, we'll stop, sorry. You have the tumor here, you can see that we have a nice triangle shape repartition, and this is confirmed by the CT acquisition because the procedure was performed on the CT table. So basically we did everything with ultrasound guidance and we achieved the same result as uh, we would have achieved using CT guidance alone. In that case, it was too late for the anesthesiologist to wait for the bubble of gas to go. So we did the uh, contrast acquisition with CT to assess complete ablation. Moving to patient two, he has a large metastasis on the left lobe. It's easily visible with ultrasound. So in that case, the appropriate approach, you don't require a fusion, you don't require needle tracking, you can see it very easily on, on ultrasound alone. So you puncture it. As I, saw, uh, as I told you before, we um, wanted to do two applications, one lateral, one medial, so we started to put the microwave probe on the lateral part of the tumor. This was easy. Again, you can see, really see the needle and the tumor. But from that point, I will be in trouble. Why is that? Because when I will start ablating, you will have gas, and I won't see anything left. So you can do an ultrasound-ultrasound fusion. You insert the needle, you do a 3D acquisition, and you register it to the live ultrasound. You can put a small dot here, to see exactly what the tip was. Then you start ablating and you can see I cannot see anything anymore. So when I want to reposition the needle more medially there, I will use the system, reposition more medially. This is the live ultrasound. I cannot see here because of the gas, but can, I can see that I'm on the medial part of the tumor based on the previous 3D acquisition. Again, I'm putting a small dot there to confirm I'm in the good position, and then you ablate. And finally, I can confirm that the distance should be okay and I don't see anything left. But with the previous 3D acquisition, I'm quite confident that the ablation should be okay. 
Moving to the final part of the intervention, assessing complete ablation. And you can see here with contrast, I'm not very happy with the shape of ablation. It's not round and we have a small defect here, so probably the safety margins are not good enough. No problem, you can puncture again under contrast ultrasound guidance. You can see the needle here. It takes 20 seconds to reposition the needle in the zone where the ablation is not good enough. Then you ablate again and the final contrast acquisition show you a very round shape ablation, so in that case you are finally happy. And finally, moving to patient three, again, the small metastasis. If you use standard ultrasound alone, probably your approach will be subcostal, but in that case, it's almost impossible. Or lateral, but the problem is you are going directly into the tumor, which is not recommended. So again, fusion will help us to choose the best approach, which is the anterior one, because we go through a small part of the normal liver parenchyma. So this is what we do. You have here the fusion. You can see the tumor on CT here, and on ultrasound there. And based on the fusion data, you can see that we have a little bit of normal parenchyma before we touch the tumor. And in that case, of course, the best approach is to come like this. I cannot go through the transducer. So in that case, I would use the needle tracking device to do an out of the plane approach. You can see here the, the microconvex probe, I'm puncturing below. And in that case, again, using needle tracking will help me to be sure that I will be correctly located. You can see the needle tracking here, oops, sorry. And finally, the final position, and I'm imaging beneath the rib, I cannot see with ultrasound, but based on fusion and needle tracking, I know that I'm correctly located. You ablate, and finally, you can do your final control. So again, assessing complete ablation. This is what you see on normal ultrasound, some bubble of gas. It's better to inject, and you can see there a large ablation compared to the tumor, which is visible here on fusion. Basically, the tumor is here, and we're sure we have ablating this with safety margins. So, I don't know if you remember the movie Transformers when the robots can turn into uh, cars or planes. It's exactly the same feeling when you are using the ultrasound and the new ultrasound machine. So this is the applio I use for the liver ablation and basically this is what I feel. It can change into a CT scan. I hope you liked it because it took me one hour to do that. <laughs> And before the conclusion, I would just to show you it's not only for liver, it could be for other things. You have here a superficial lymph nodes that we want to ablate for local tumor control. This is done with a 24 megahertz probe, so very high quality imaging. You can see less than one millimeter there. You can position the probe, ablate using cryoablation, you have the ice ball there, and again, you are able to image the skin and you are able to see that you are not freezing the skin. So you are doing an ablation without any complication, providing that you have a very nice image guidance with the 24 megahertz probe. Again, you can do the 3D acquisition and compare before cryo and during cryo with the ice ball and see that the ice ball is covering the tumor. And finally, this is also something that has to be proven, but you can use SMI to see what you have done. This is before cryo. You can see the vessels inside. And this is after cryo once the ice ball has melt, so like 20 minutes after. And you will see that there are almost no vessel left inside the tumor. So basically, you should have treated completely. You can see that there are small dots sometimes inside, and this is due to the fact that cryoablation induced thrombosis in the first 24 hours. So this control was done a few minutes after ablation, so probably if we had done this control the day after, there was no uh, vessel left inside. So I told you, you feel like in CT scan, but remember, this is what you have to wear when you are doing a CT guided procedures. So if you can change this again into an ultrasound machine, you can use the very lighter dressing of ultrasound guidance procedure, and this is really helpful in daily practice. Finally, coming to a conclusion, I hope I've convinced you that it's intelligent, innovative, and intuitive, and clearly it will increase the precision of your intervention. The use of uh, multi-parametric ultrasound should increase in interventional radiology, and of course you should know how and when to use it, and also when not to use it, because you cannot do everything with this kind of guidance, but Clearly, you can improve the quality and the number of uh, ultrasound-guided intervention. Thank you very much.